and welcome to this new video where I intend to show how to start up from scratch with the setup of a microcontroller custom board. In this video, I will show how to set up the microcontroller from a power perspective and reach a stable result suitable to then develop your own product. Before to start, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and if you like the video, to give it a thumbs up. But let's start! When you start prototyping a new product in the digital electronic space, whether you are a professional or a maker, I think it's fair to say that the best approach is to prepare a general product design and then choose the best prototyping platform for you to start with. Approaching the work with a classic Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or another prototyping board among the dozen available on the market nowadays, it's about you, your needs and your knowledge. Then. If you come to an end with your prototype, it's very likely that you will want to create your custom board implementation. In fact, prototyping boards are very limited in terms of flexibility for IO setup and very costly, so not good for final product. In case, for instance, of my DIY remote controller project, I chosen the microchip Atmel platform and after several try and error attempts, see the videos on the channel, I finally chosen the ATSAM E70 microcontroller. During the prototyping phase, I used the SAM E70 Explained Pro Board, which in fact significantly simplified my work. And now it's time to go custom. When you move to this direction, the first thing to do is to set up a breadboard where you will implement your custom microcontroller circuit. to do that, you have to choose the appropriate chip because there are several versions of the SAM E70 as well as for any other microcontroller. And find a suitable adapter to bring the packaging of your microcontroller to the 2.54 deep format of your breadboard. In my experience, there are two options to do so. Microcontroller containers that with the pressure latch mechanism allow you to temporarily fit the microcontroller and connect it via wire jumper to the breadboard. Or 
an ad hoc PCB adapter over which you can permanently solder the microcontroller and, in most of the case, connect it directly to the breadboard via pin headers. For the purpose of my project, I have chosen the second option. The next step is to get the data ship of your microcontroller and start studying the power setup, procedure, pins and general pinout matrix. As usual when it comes to the data sheet, a whole different story and challenge starts. Some E70 data sheet, for instance, is 1950 pages. So let's focus just what it is needed to start it up. As soon as you open the data sheet, I suggest you to have a look to the order information page, it's easily readable and it helps a lot to fully understand the identifier of your microcontroller. Second step is to check the pinout for the package you chose in order to identify the power leads. Typically VDD, that is the input for the 3.3 volt general power if you work on a 32-bit microcontroller. VDD IO were present to power up the I.O. buses and GND pins for ground. In some cases you have VDD out, which is the output for the internal voltage regulator. Because in the case of my microcontroller, for instance, the core power is actually at 1.2 volt. So general power must be regulated from the 3.3 volt. Then VDD core, which is the input for the 1.2 volt regulated power plus some other VDD lines dedicated for instance to USB bus, PLL frequency multipliers and so on. Other useful pin to look for are the reset one and the programming debugging interface one, in my case SWD. If you move to the power consideration chapter, you will find all the details to the power line identifiers. Moving to the DC characteristic, you can see what are the typical minimum and maximum voltage values for all power lines, which is very useful to avoid to wrongly connect them and burn the microcontroller. Over there, there's a very important part to put attention on, the suggested decoupling capacitor values. This info comes very handy because one thing is to power up the microcontroller and one another thing is to do it in a stable and reliable way. In my experience, not following this instruction leads 9 out of 10 to a non-workable result. Another very useful source of information for all power-up wiring elements is the board schema of your prototyping board. Yes, because all this implementation issue has been already resolved and the electrical schema and board design of your prototyping board are fully available. Let's review now my breadboard implementation. You can see the PCB microcontroller adapter. You can see the ground pins in blue. The red ones are the 3.3 volts, where the yellow ones are the 1.2 volts regulated power, either the output from the internal regulator or the input lines. You can see there the SWD programming pins, with SWDIO, SWD CLK, and Reset pin. I always wire a momentary button to the Reset pin in order to reset the circuit upon need. I always put two LEDs, one green that I light up at the startup, which tells it that the microcontroller is on, and a yellow one blinking every second. This is connected to a timer and it tells that the clock and the curve functionality is stable. I learned that this simple trick is very much useful to understand if everything went really well at the startup phase and the circuit is stable. As you can see, I have also implemented an external crystal oscillator. 
I always do so to have a more accurate timing, but that's not mandatory if you have an internal oscillator available. Finally, do you remember when I said that the datasheet is useful to choose the right version of your microcontroller? I said so because in fact I didn't check it out. Having a look now into the configuration summary, I notice that the AT Sun E70J21 I have chosen with 64 leads LQFP package have in fact just a 5 UART channel where I need 8 provided by the 144 LQFP microcontroller installed into the explain prototyping board. And that means that all of this is good for the trash can. Thanks a lot and cheers. See you in the next video.